Let's continue and talk about the Clark-Wilson model. The Clark-Wilson model was designed in 1987 and unlike the previous two models was largely designed for commercial applications. Similar to the BIBA model, it enforces integrity but in a different way. Instead of being designed on the concept of a state machine, he defines each data item and then restricts the programs that can modify it. So he's restricting access to a data item through the programs that are legal or authorized to modify it. He uses security labels to grant access to those objects. So through defining the data item in a constrained fashion, he constrains programs that can modify it, thereby reducing the possibility that a rogue program can get in and change the data and destroy integrity. Let's take a look at a few definitions or terms that help us understand the Clark-Wilson model. First off, there is a constrained data item, CDI. That is the data item that is protected by the model. Now, not every data item is protected by the Clark-Wilson model. There are data items which live outside and are not protected, and those are called unconstrained data items. Now, an example of unconstrained data item would be data input or output. If you're constraining all of the data that you're physically going to store, then data that someone types in has not yet entered the system, and output that you're putting out onto a report has already left the security system, so those are considered to be unconstrained data items. Now, the integrity verification procedure is a procedure or collections of procedures that verify the integrity of a data item. So the IVP will work on CDIs. The integrity verification procedure will always operate to transform unconstrained data items to constrained data items. Now, actually, when I say it will convert, it doesn't actually convert. It just verifies that the integrity of a specific CDI is maintained. It's actually the transformation procedure that modifies the CDIs. It's the only procedures that are allowed to touch or to write constrained data items. So through a very small set of transformation procedures, we can restrict which procedures can touch the CDIs, the constrained data items, and thereby maintain integrity of the data.